Hey, Mistakes listeners, this is Dave, and welcome back, and uh, I'm really glad to be back once again. This week we watched a show called uh, Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Uh, had an interesting time watching this one as well. Um, this uh, episode was recorded on 10-24-2015. This happens to be episode 31. And remember, you can follow us on Twitter at Parent Mistakes, and you can like us on Facebook at Parenting Mistakes. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hey Todd, we're back. We are back. So I got a quiz for you. I'm ready. I, uh, well, I don't really test well. Quiz, quiz for Dave. You know, <laughs> well, Put on your thinking cap. <laughs> okay. I'm... Only, only one question. Only okay. Only one question. All right. And I, and and maybe you can answer this. And this relates a lot to uh, parenting, and it relates to media, and it relates to what we let our kids watch. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to assume that you have seen the new Star Wars trailer. Uh, the third one. Maybe, maybe 18, 19 times. I think. 18, 19 times. <laughs> yeah, I think. Okay. I think. Right. I think that's that's a humble account. Okay. I I assume that. Yeah. <laughs> So let me ask you this. What is this film going to be rated? I'm going to say PG-13. Okay. Now, does that... Is that the quiz? Is, do I win? That's the quiz. <laughs> what yes. do I win? What do I, I win? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, unfortunately, in this case, it's a quiz that I don't actually have the answer for. Hmm. Okay. A different type of educational model. Right. <laughs> okay. So let me ask you this. Does this put parents into an interesting quandary, particularly particularly for parents that have younger children who are undoubtedly uh, being oriented to the Star Wars universe through commercials and lots of toys? And I thought about this yesterday because I saw a kid, younger kid, mm -hmm. running around with one of them new lightsabers that's got the uh, I don't know it's got the, the regular lightsaber yep. blade and then mm -hmm. it's got the two little things sticking out the side whatever yep. mm -hmm. it's much younger child and then I'm thinking to myself okay as far as I can tell from the trailer you have sort of your standard Star Wars happiness but then you also have some you have the villain you have some darker elements you have some violence and so I'm wondering what this is going to be rated, and is that going to put parents in a bind if they've got, say, a six-year-old or a seven-year-old who's excited about the new droid and about the new characters, and then, yeah. Yeah. How much do you know about the MPAA? How much do I know? Yeah. I know... Because this, this is always something that comes up in my brain is, like, knowing the background of the MPAA always makes me go, hmm... I know that there is a sufficient amount of controversy about the MPAA, mm -hmm. and that I don't envy trying to rate a film, given the subjective nature of certain elements. Mm -hmm. Sex, violence, adult content, language. And I also know that it has certainly evolved over time. Mm -hmm. What was a third? PG-13 movie back in the day is not necessarily what a PG-13 movie is today. Right. PG used to be a harder PG. Right. Before Temple of Doom, right, which was the right. first PG-13 movie. Right. Yeah, so, so um, when, when I'm always considering ratings, and I think uh, ratings is an interesting aspect of our show, for sure, because uh, yes. we kind of look at it as well. Um, these, <laughs> what I used to think before I... What knew anything was that the MPA was was sort of a government check, right? There is somebody in office somewhere that is like the FCC, which I don't know enough about the FCC. I'm assuming the FCC is government. Yes, checked. it is. Um, I thought it was more along the lines of that, but it's not. The MPAA is actually us checking us, right? It's not like the Food and Drug Administration where they're doing all this work to to hold right. our safety. So it's, it's like an accrediting body for 
educational institution. Right, and and the threat has always been that, hey, if we don't have the MPAA, then the government will come in and actually start rating these things for us, right? Um, if you've listened to enough talk radio or CNN or whatever, right, like there's enough of this controversy of, well, we don't like the MPAA because they're us and they can kind of make uh, statements and you know, jurisdictions there, but at the same time, we don't want Barack Obama coming in and say, well, I deem that, you know, episode three should be rated R because my kids blah, 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 you know. So um, it always comes down to the kid. That That's what it comes down for me, although there is sort of a line for me when it comes to the R rating. And I don't think the R rating has changed much over the years, right? Mm, I guess I, think, I, I don't. I think you can add more F-bombs now with the R rating, <clears throat> right? I, there should be like – maybe maybe they should put like an R16 to kind of bridge the gap, <laughs> right? <laughs> the whole <Wow>. spectrum, <laughs> right? My, my, my background in higher education kicks in when I think about that because I start to think about quantifiable variables. In other words – you need some sort of objective measurement. Yes. You have to sort of say, okay, if we see this, and I think there is some of that in films. I think there's a certain amount of, okay, if, it, if they use these words, if we see these body parts, if they are engaging in these activities or implying that they're engaging in these types of activities, if we sort of see a certain amount of blood or weaponry or whatever, mm -hmm. that puts it in a category. Mm-hmm. The hard part is when you get into implied things, implied sexuality, you know, where there's a couple characters and then the fade to black and we sort of are told what they're going to do next. Or yeah, as I recall, I think episode two got a PG, right? So yes, let's see, we take, we, take, we take episode two, for example, oh, well, before I get in trouble, is it for sure PG? I'm pretty sure it is. I think the only one that was PG-13 was episode three. Okay. Uh, yeah. So looks like and, it got and, PG. And and that was that was a new thing for Star Wars because again this was always a thing and you know it always makes me think also about marketing because from what I've read and I sort of get this I think for a lot of studios PG-13 is kind of the sweet spot in terms of marketing a film. Sure. Because they know that parents are going to allow their kids to go, even if the ratings suggest that they should not. And adults will still go to a PG-13 movie. Right. Because if it's a PG movie, then they'll think it's a kid's show and mm -hmm. it's not for them. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, just, I, was, I was thinking about that and I was, you know, in light of how this film is being marketed and as usual it's going to be marketed with fun little droids and gadgets and attractive new characters mm -hmm. and old and, right and now th this should be well this should be hitting that 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 sweet spot and jj's yeah. a marketeer as well jj yes. abrams he's total marketeer so um, parents beware how about that yeah parents beware i mean I think you have. St I think you made a really good statement. I thought about quite a bit uh, a couple weeks past. You're like, I I'm sick of it, right? Yeah. Like, I'm just Already. sick of it. I there's so much of it, and it's just out of control hype. Uh, like, I can't even go to the Cinerama for this opening show. The tickets sold out so fast that our premier theater I can't even get into for like a week or so. It's it's nuts, right? I mean, so no matter I, what, this thing is going to make crazy amounts of money. And it is. I, you know what? I like I like your caution, which is there's this storm coming, this vortex, and you know you're probably going to get sucked into it. And right, and I I remember this around around episode one. And actually, Todd, I was so marketing convinced before episode one that when we watched it, my wife and I were like, "That was a great movie. I can't believe I just watched that." Right. Because it was so visually stunning and there were so many things going on that I didn't actually follow what was actually happening, right? 
they're on a blue planet, water planet, and then they're doing pod races, and then, oh, lightsaber fight, right? right? All the things I ever wanted from a Star Wars film that I've been eager to see for the past 20 years, I got. But then come to find out five years later, I kid you not, it was literally five years later that there was just absolute hatred for that film. Yes. But it took a long time for that marketing machine to kind of finally just brush away <laughs> because right. it's Star Wars. It's Star Wars. And I worry about the parents who, when this movie comes out, are going to have a six-year-old who wants to go see it. Yeah, you it's know what? It's yeah. different when you've got, say, you know, an 11-year-old, a 12-year-old, you know, a kid that's maybe a little more ch- mature can handle that sort of thing. But when it's a six-year-old that, you know, has the toys and it's like, oh, great, the movie's out, I want to go see it. And then you're like, oh, by the way, there's sort of this dark assassin character and there's all these bodies all over the place. Then you start to wonder whether or not that's a good thing. So. Yeah, I like uh, that. There's so many ways to go on this topic. I'm sure you and I, you and I, could talk about Star Wars forever, which we don't want to do. But no, um, yeah, I, I, just a little side note. Like uh, somebody was went to Target and they got online and was complaining to Target corporate, as I recall the story. They're basically saying, "Hey, you've got Anakin Skywalker on your store shelves, and he kills children." You've he got does. an action figure that 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 you celebrate as a hero, but at the end of the day, he kills children, right? This is true. But it's Star Wars. That's right. <laughs> You're right. That Darth okay. Vader, he kills children, right? He does. <laughs> but it's Star Wars, and so I think that's a great. I mean, I think we as parents continue to have to watch. The marketing and the hype, and we could get totally sucked into something and buy into something that we don't really want to be buying into. Correct. Case in point. Sorry, I just had to repeat it. Not everybody is as clever as you are, Todd. Well, <laughs> few are, but that's okay. Oh, and boy, the show we watched this week, boy, was it clever. Yes, it was. So <sighs> let's talk about Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Yeah, so did you watch any Peabody and Sherman growing up? I did not. This was on this. Okay, so this is a. There's been a couple different versions of this. This, this was sure? a, this was part of Rocky and Bullwinkle. Originally, I think they were a sideshow. Yeah, the Rocky and then and show. I did see the the film, the 2014 film, Mr. Peabody and Sherman, which I actually enjoyed. Oh, okay. I'm glad I, someone watched it. Yeah, yeah, I actually enjoyed that. I think it, I thought it was, I thought it was fairly clever and it was smart and. You've always got sort of this, I guess, pseudo-educational angle to it, where they're going back in history and they're talking about different historical figures and that sort of thing. Right. But this version of it is new. Right. So you you watched the movie. The movie, I'm assuming, is lining up more with the old Peabody and Sherman. Correct. Because I haven't seen it. Correct. Um, Where you have um, you have Mr. Peabody, who is a dog, and the, the sort of reverse gag is that it's Mr. Peabody and his boy, right? right? As opposed right. to, you know, boy and his dog. Right. Mr. Peabody is a uh, intellectual, and he wears glasses, which, of course, that makes them intellectual. Sure. And, and you're wearing glasses, so you're an intellectual. It, it's true. I got LASIK, so I'm no longer <laughs> smart. But anyway. So Mr. Peabody and then Sherman is his, his, his uh, boy, and they... <laughs> go back in time and interact with various historical figures. But for this particular show, which just premiered in October on Netflix, uh, they have a TV variety show. Yes. So it's a talk show format. Yeah, it's it's obviously their show for a while on their show. Yes, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so your initial reaction to this. Oh, man... We talked a lot Star Wars, so let's just cut to the chase, right? (laughs) So uh, I want to get right to the mistake because I can't resist. Um, So, yes, there is some sort of skeletal form that is the Peabody and Sherman show that was here where they basically go back in time and visit historical figures. Correct. Yes. So in this episode, Cleopatra is the uh, historical figure they go back in time to visit. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, pretty much like the Voyagers, correct? Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. There is something that's not right, 
And so it's their job to correct the problem. So it turns out that in this show, Cleopatra, had, Cleopatra has been kicked out of the palace by her brother. And they basically tell Cleopatra, if you hook up with this guy, Mark Anthony... Oh, it's Julius you, Caesar. Julius Caesar. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, where did I get Mark Anthony? I don't know. I don't know either. I'm thinking Elizabeth Taylor. He's a pop star. <laughs> Something. <laughs> yes. If you hook up with this guy, Caesar, he he will... He will... Uh, if you date him and you... You show your feminine wiles to him. He will come and save the day and kick your brother out with his with his armies. Correct. Because her brother actually has all of the Egyptian legions. Um, I'm not even sure that's right. So let's say this is the first time that my child is introduced to that particular story. I can't even say it right. After watching this episode, I'm not even sure what happened historically. Um they take a stab at it, but it turns out that uh, it's Taming of the Shrew, right? Or uh, what is that uh, movie, My Fair Lady, okay. where they discover yes. that Cleopatra is just a slob. She's a loudmouth. She's not refined, and there's just she no bel- way. She belches a lot. She belches. She's disgusting, right? Yes. Um, uh, and apparently a Gre- Greco-Roman wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> Quote, unquote, a lot of male aspects to her, yes. right? Like, which I was yes. kind of, I put my nose up as well. Like, oh, being this means you're more male, which means you're not very negative. There, There's some very interesting stereotypes mixing and wrapping up in the show. And I'm like, I couldn't stand it. I'm like, I, I don't know what's going on, right? Okay. I. I don't understand. They're trying to take a stab at history, but it's not really historical. And I get the feeling that they don't know enough about Cleopatra to really characterize her as this horrible slob that has no right, no no sense of nobility or or self dignity or pride. The leader of Egypt who just who just would rather pig wrestle, right? Yes. Or or whatever. I. I, I I had a hard time with it. Now the problem is, is I don't really recall the old show. I'm not sure if they were. I'm assuming they were observing time and they were interacting with historical characters, right? Yeah. Right. And then, I mean, later on in the show, I mean, that's just one dynamic. They actually pull on a couple of other historical figures as well. Montezuma, right? Yes. To build up to just this horrible joke at the end because you knew that he was going to have to say Montezuma's revenge. Yes. So I'm like, I, the show bordered on. Oh, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it because I that's not I'll our just show. I'll just say it. I'll just say it. Go ahead. It was dumb. Okay. <laughs> okay. I I'm frustrated because I'm like, there's so much potential to be had there, and they're just screwing with it. Well, I felt like they took a concept that was a fairly good concept fairly good structure in terms of you've got this basic plot of they go back in time and they interact it's you know it's a little bit was magic school bus like this or something like that or was it magic school bus what did they do no they still they uh they they do go back in time and the magic okay. school bus they do okay they do i feel and like they... they i feel like somebody took this and said you know what it's a little too soft let's let's amp it up a little bit so i i feel like they took a show and they just sort of dumped a whole bunch of Red Bull into the characters. Yeah, and and the and humor it, falls short for me. I'm like, I'm not yeah. finding this funny. It's not it, funny. It sort of had a, and we've talked about this a little bit, that there's, like on the Cartoon Network, you have a little bit of this, sort of this frantic, forced humor where we need the characters to run around and be very, very pronounced and they need to be belching, and they need to have things flying around, and there needs to be a lot of sort of noise and in-your-face stuff. Sure. Yeah, this is the SpongeBob effect, right? <laughs> yeah. Or Ren and so, Simpy, I'd say, are the first to bring this along. So I think that's probably my biggest thing, is that it's distracting to watch. And, and I, I came away with this sort of saying, 
you can do better than this. We can we can do better in terms of, and you and I have talked about throughout a lot of these episodes. What's the purpose of kids programming? Is it really supposed to be educational? Is there supposed to be redeeming value, or is it okay for it to just be twenty two minutes of filling time? And there is always a balance between that. I looked at it as you can do so much better than this. It was just kind of, I don't know. It was weirdness. No, I, I, I am. I think the mistake here is throwing a kid at this, and the kid actually starts getting a bit of history because it's not like these things between the Romans and the Egyptians. It actually happened. Right. Right. Okay. Well, I wasn't there, so I can't really say it actually happened. But I can tell you there wasn't a dog and his boy there. <laughs> right. <laughs> Basically playing it out for them, but that's frustrating to me because I'm like the. Again, it'd be cool. Again, what I loved about Voyagers in the 80s was they were actually working with a real historical thing, an event that happened. They're trying to correct it, make sure that it happens, so you actually got a feel for it. And you actually, at the end of the story, see what the correct version is, right? Uh, we had some stereotypes that I just thought were were terrible. They, they basically go and get these uh, Aztec Indians to come forward because they know that they will do human sacrifices it just makes assumptions about culture and cultures throughout history that these people would come forward in time and do their bidding for them right there's some villains that they want to get rid of they get the Aztecs who are quote unquote ruthless and make these villains believe that they're gonna get killed like they're gonna yes. get beheaded and I'm like I, I just found it offensive I'm like this is just offensive not to mention the um and I should remember the product because the whole thing is built around Sherman gets a sponsor for the show, which is a pudding, isn't it? Yeah. No, no, that's that's the premise there. That's the secondary plot. But they have a couple of guys who are the spokespersons for this uh, Mexican, I would say sort of the Mexican lineage, but the stereotype Mexican lineage. Yeah, or the fat guy that sweats all the time. Yes. Because that one character is incessantly sweating because all people that are fat sweat. I'm yes. sorry. It's just... <laughs> it's just... Yuck. I couldn't... I, I, I just sure. found it really offensive almost. I wasn't sure whether or not uh, it was okay to laugh at the characters' names. Oh, what were the names? Jose and Jose B. Oh, <laughs> that's right. That's right. See, just saying it out of context, though, it just sounds... Yeah, Poor. it's forced. It's forced. <laughs> no, I think that was the other thing I was trying to nail. That it's like there were. I, I wanted to take a couple of quotes down. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't find them right away. But yes, a lot of it was forced. Right, just bich, ram down your throat. So I think I think the thing that the mistake here is to assume that if you saw the movie, which I think was pretty good, and if you remember the old TV show, this is not the same thing. No, it's not. This is this is a as you said a sort of a SpongeBob version of it. It is a amped up sort of Cartoon Network frantic, and you know not necessarily appropriate version. No, but I yeah yeah I I couldn't say couldn't say it better, and I want to say more, but <laughs> you know I mean when we get into like a show like this, it's so easy to just boop, boop, boop. I can sit here for another twenty minutes just talking about it. Yeah. All right. I'm like Ugh, right. It's it's really nice to find the gem because it's like this is a gem, you know. These are things that we like, and it's usually a lot easier to talk about. Um, yes. But this show has got so many holes, <laughs> little little rabbit holes to follow. It's like crazy. Yes. Anything else? No, I think that's it. I'd say you know what, steer clear of this show. Yeah. You can follow us online, on Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter, uh, Parent Mistakes. <laughs> do you want to follow us on Twitter? I'm I do really, follow us on Twitter. I'm not really My sure. personal account. <laughs> and you can like our Facebook page. Yeah, you can. Parenting Mistakes. Mm -hmm. Leave us feedback. Shows we should uh, evaluate. Comments. All right. And you could, uh, why don't you do the uh, goodbye? Uh, goodbye. Goodbye.